give you some quick tips on optimizing CSS. Uh, for those of us that have been doing web work for a while, like myself, and we're used to the days when we used to have dial-up modems, and you know, that file size, every little bit helped, every little kilobyte counted. And it's kind of ironic that even now that we have broadband, these concerns have started to come back again as we start to deal with the the world of mobile and mobile delivery over you know slightly slower cell phone networks so it's kind of ironic that we've gone full circle so I thought I would give you some tips on optimizing some CSS what I've done here is created a, a quick little sort of sample HTML file with some styles and uh, we're gonna go through and optimize this here it's not uncommon when you're designing a page or a website or a web application to basically just do the design and then go back and optimize later on that's what I do and a lot of time you'll find you'll end up with you know some overlapping styles that can be simplified and grouped together so we're going to take a look at doing that and what I've got here is an HTML file with three different heading styles we've got a link here and we've got a different style for you know hovering over the the link there we've got the underline and then we have this block of text here with a you know background color and a different uh, link there, different colored link style. So looking at the HTML, I think you can see it's pretty straightforward. We have some H1, H2, H3 tags, a paragraph tags, some links. And then down here we have this div with an ID of content, which wraps the gray box with the line in. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the style here. And as you can see, it's horrible. I mean, I would never do this in a design environment. This is just purely to demonstrate the point of the video here so looking through you know we have a style for the body of the page one for the h1 tag h2 h3 some for the links there including the hover and the visited state we have the uh, hash there content for the id the div with the id of content with some padding some margins and some font sizes and colors and background color and then finally some different links here different color links here for the link inside the content div so basically straightforward as you can see but very badly optimized so the first thing we should look at it here is you know what groups what can we group together and simplify well going back to the top let's work from the top down here we can see that in the body we define the font family and a font size a base font size of 16 pixels so going through you know we really don't need this line here in the h1 tag let's just clean that up there a little we don't need this one here in the h2 tag either since we're just redefining the same thing so we're just going to take those out scrolling down now we're looking for any other font families since they're all the same we only need it once so that's taken care of looking down the h1 has a, a you know a color and the h2 and the h3 has the same color as well now notice though that you know they do have different font sizes so those have to be defined well you know going through i guess we could look at this and we could say well you know we could actually group these together here and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to create a new one of an h1 h2 and an h3 and basically by doing it like this I'm actually grouping those together so what I'm saying here is the h1 h2 and h3 tag I want all of them to have this color property of hash 069 and so now I can actually just remove those here we don't need to repeat these three times and that the beauty of this too is if we decide to go back and change that later on we only need to change that in one location instead of the three so that's that. The only thing that's different between the H1, H2, and H3 are the tags, is the font sizes. So we define those in there. So just clicking back, you can see nothing's actually visually changed, but we've you know greatly reduced the amount of code required there since that doesn't change. So looking down, we're going to look for the same thing again. Um, you know, same thing here with the the A tag, the href tags here, the link, the hover, and the visited same color again so let's let's just go through and do that again and we're going to do the hover state we'll add the visited state as well there and let's just group those in there like that so same thing again we'll add a color of hash 390 and we can go down and we can now remove those ones from here now we have to have the the text decoration changes as you can see 
So, you know, what we actually could do here is we could actually go back here as well and we could say for the text decoration of none, like so, and then we'll just remove these completely. So we'll actually just remove this A link here and we'll remove the visited one. Since the only different one is the hover, we can go ahead and do that. And if we click back in here, as you can see, when I click over there, scroll over the hover remains the same we get the underlined and the reason that works still is pretty straightforward if you follow the theory of inheritance here what we have is we're defining it once now arguably this is incorrect in some ways but it works you know you can do this it's perfectly valid we say text decoration none and then as the browser goes down and works through the tree for the rendering of the screen it's going to see this newer rule here for the hover state with the underline and that is going to overrule this one back up here with text decoration of none. So it's perfectly valid to do that. Now going down, looking at the content pad here, you know, we've got some padding, some margin, and some font sizes, and a width and a background color. We'll leave those as is. We have a content A, an A hover, and an A visited. And these, since they follow the content here, it's specific. We're drilling down and we're saying only the A tag inside the content tag and only the a hover state inside the content tag and only the a visited state inside the content tag now again all of these the colors the same you know text decoration is, is none again hover is the only one that's different so you know let's go ahead and do the same thing again we're actually going to do this here we'll add in visited as well and that actually means that now you know, we don't really need this one at all for the visited state. We can lose the color declaration from the hover state and we'll just click back in here. And as you can see, again, it still works and visually exactly the same, but we've greatly reduced the code. And so we'll just continue to look through here. We've grouped those together and there you have it. So, you know, the, whilst this is not a very complicated file, you will find over time that, you know, sites and pages and style sheets can get very big and very cumbersome. And so it's, it's good to manage this stuff and try and keep them as small as possible. Now, by no means is this, you know, the perfect way I would put this out there to the world on a production server. But I just wanted to give you a few examples of how you can go through and look for commonalities in the style sheets and ways that you can go through and do like we've done here and group tags together to reduce the lines of code and ultimately reduce the lines, you know, the, the file size as well for download. So I hope that's been useful and, you know, feel free to follow us on at UIBuzz on Twitter so that you can get updates for new videos and content.